turns out just days before MF Global went down in flames, its former CEO, John Corzine, was out shopping for luxury chateaus in France. Oh, I can't get over it. So was Corzine clueless about his company's pending doom, or was he really trying to get out of Dodge? Our panelists are here to break it down. Carol Roth is a business strategist and best-selling author. Remy Spencer is an attorney. And T.J. McCormack is the host of Sunday Night with T.J. McCormack. Carol, let's start with you. What do you make of this? Uh, this drives me over the edge, I have to tell you. The chateau, it's just the word chateau, I think, that upsets me so much. <laughs> yes, that is a very upsetting word, Jerry. <laughs> I'm seeing this interesting trend. We used to think that people who had these great shows of wealth obviously were really good at managing their money. And I think that one of the things we have to be aware of, if you are a good spender, you are not a good investor and manager. And we've seen this with celebrities. We saw this with Dennis Kessler. Of Tyka. We see this with our own government, right? The people who can spend all the money on campaigns getting elect elected cannot balance a budget to save their life. So my takeaway is if people are showing you their wealth, they're showing you they're really good at spending, go with somebody fiscally conservative it's hard to be both for managing things. and investing. It's hard yes. to be both things, Very Remy. much so. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think um, perhaps the perception is what he's trying to put out there for the public, not really the reality. A lot of times when people uh, are spiraling downward. They want to put on a show that they're stronger, they're wealthier, they're better. And I think that may have been what happened in this case. There's nothing in the south of France that is uh, discount or cheap or inexpensive. I mean, you have to be looking down on the 1% to even consider something like you that. You don't know where the 1% are, let's no. face yeah. it. You no. couldn't find them with a microscope or binoculars. <laughs> okay, uh, TJ, you jump I, in here. Well, you know, first of all, he was shopping for luxury chateaus as opposed to, you know, lousy chateaus or secondhand chateaus <laughs> or whatever. Uh, you know, listen, of course, Design is a book accurately judged by its cover. First of all, he's got an arrogant beard. His beard says to me, I can look like a slob and still be a billionaire. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, and the other thing is, too, is, you know, I, I never thought I'd say this, but thank God Timothy Geithner didn't resign because it turns out he was potentially a replacement for the man. Uh, I don't know where that, uh, I have no idea where that 1.5 trillion went. I have no idea. That's the scenario we could be looking at. You know, I think, Jerry, the interesting part of this story is that we're going to see, I believe, uh, indictments returned out of the U.S. Attorney's Office for the missing money from M. MF Global's clients. There's a billion dollars that's missing. This uh, house shopping took place two weeks before MF Global went down and it became public that the in money Europe, was missing. Where he was in investing. That's exactly right. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's talk about the IRS. We've talked about spending. Let's talk about the IRS. They went on an auditing spree in 2011, increasing their audit rate on millionaires from roughly 8% to a record high of 12.5%. And this isn't just limited to top earning individuals. The audit rate climbed for corporations as well. Remy, what does that mean? Are they just going where the money is? What, what's the answer to this? You know, when I first read this story, I had my knee-jerk reaction was, this is terrible. They shouldn't be targeting the wealthy. But then after giving it some more thought, I think it makes sense. It makes good business sense. If people are stealing or making mistakes and not giving the money to the government, if they're not paying their taxes as they should, who is going to be returning more money? The lower income <laughs> earner who's making thirty or 40000 or the $5 million earner? The point is the government brought in $55 billion from their audits last year. And, and this is how we make money with this government. We don't expand right. the economy. We should be expanding the, the economy, but I think audit's a good thing. Mm. Mm. TJ. Okay, TJ. take mine for me then, please, <laughs> if that ever happens. Look, this is, a, this is yet another message for us to send to the occupiers. Shut up. OK, OK, because the rules are not the same. Twelve percent. In other words, the people that are carrying everybody else are also getting hassled more than anybody else. Uh, the top one percent are getting audited 12 times more than the bottom one percent. I'm sorry. It's everything is just fine. Occupiers. Carol, what do you say? Yes, it sounds like a very 99% friendly policy, but, you know, I am all for profiling. I don't care if it's based on wealth, if it's based on sex, if it's based on geographic area. If there's a certain group of people who aren't paying what is due, then we should be going after them. But I think that it's really important to remember this shouldn't be a PR opportunity and this shouldn't be politics. It has to make business sense, as Remy said. It's, it's a thoroughgoing political effort, I think. All right. We have to talk about smoking. Mm. More and more employers are dictating what you can and cannot do outside of the workplace. This is interesting. Get this. An increasing number of companies won't hire you if you smoke. 
not just at work, but anywhere, anytime, regardless if you're on the clock or you are not. TJ? Well, it makes sense on the surface because you it shouldn't make sense on the well, surface. I'm saying on the surface. At first, at first blush, well, yeah, we shouldn't smoke. So, okay, I get that. And you want to hire people. You know we're going to be around for a long time. You know, but so then here comes the slippery slope. We don't like slippery slopes. What's next? People who eat fatty foods, too much sugar. My thing, I like the mandatory cessation idea because, you know, hey, you give somebody a new job, make them quit, and they get a longer life, a double reward. I don't know. When we start regulating what people do in their homes, in their private time, we are getting into a very dangerous situation. Where does it stop? If you don't want to hire someone for a reason, that's fine. But you can't make a blanket rule that says, I'm not going to hire anyone that smokes. How about someone who wants to drink uh, regular soda as opposed to diet soda? Or you have to use the gym? Or you, you can't eat anything I'm fatty I'm using food. the full-on butter. No one's stopping me <laughs> from using exactly. the high-fat butter, okay? I don't care. <laughs> You yeah, feel the I, same way? I feel exactly the Go same way. Butter. People want to smoke and kill themselves. And I'm a former smoker. Me I'm a non-smoker. And I, my there opinion hasn't changed throughout my quitting smoking. Let's get Carol on that This is not a good thing. No, no, this is, no, this is not a regulation. Let me use an analogy. If you're a smoker and you want to date a girl who's not smoking, she lays down the law. She says, either you quit or you date me. You have two choices. You say, okay, well, I like you, so I quit. Or you know what? Quit. Smoking is more important than me, and there are other hot babes out there, and I choose my life. <laughs> lifestyle. The same thing with companies. If your company has a corporate culture that values not smoking, both internally and externally, then you're not a fit. And you can but decide your either I'm not going to make this you. lifestyle You know what choice. I mean? It's mm. not that kind but of a it's, relationship, it's a right. is it? It's, it's, mm. it's, not a, it's not a right. It's, it's a privilege, and it has to be a match. If you're not a match for that company, you're not going to be happy mm. if they don't accept your lifestyle choices. I agree that it's not a protected class of people like race, sexual orientation, That's nationality. Slippery. And it shouldn't be. It's a lifestyle choice. But it costs <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars to insure these employees. And if they're putting their health at risk, it's going to cost the employer more. I it can't. I, don't tell me what to do when I'm not on the clock. That's the way I. Okay. We've debated this inside and out now. <laughs> Carol, Remy, and TJ, thanks so much for helping us out tonight. You guys were great. Thanks. Thanks. All thanks, right. Jerry. Thank you. Happy weekend, everybody.